Engineer 775 on our next solar install. Got our arc batteries. Solark's about to go on the wiring trough. Um, again, a good design always leads to an easier installation. So we've spent, we all put our heads together on how to do this the best way. And then I went and, as a good supply sergeant, went and got all the parts, delivered them to the job with Elijah last week. So we got everything. Hopefully we got most everything. I know I forgot something. They'll remind me shortly. So we got our all our supplies here. Look at this workbench they, they left for us. This is awesome. We don't usually have such good working conditions, do we? And um, so we're going to run a lot of EMT on this job. We got to get EMT through this building, one inch EMT over to the solar array. And then we got to get two runs of one inch EMT over to this panel. We're going to put a critical loads panel below it. We're going to put a 100 amp disconnect over here. And we'll probably use, we're going to use a 60 amp breaker for feedback on this one. Solar 12K, arc batteries. It's becoming our standard installation. And again, if you're looking for one of these systems, you don't have to wait to do a consultation with me. If, you're, if you just tell me, this is what I want, because we're finding this works fantastic. We've done about 25 of these systems, and they're all performing extremely well. So lots of EMT to cut today. And then we're going to come back and get that EMT through the horse stalls and out to the ground work. So we already pounded the posts in out here for the array. They went really awesome today. Some days it's just awesome, but uh, other days very frustrating. We're going to bring some uh, PVC up to a pull box, get into a one inch LB in there and pop through and start running. We've got, a, so I think it's 11.2 kilowatts, Hanwha Q-Cell 400s right there, German engineering. Abraham, we're switching over from pounding posts, removing implements, and we're going to have a, a nice, nice Sinclair ground mount fixed array at 35 degrees. I'm going to start building that soon. All right. Well, that's this is the beginning of day one. We got here, unloaded, and we've already got our posts in. We get our, when we have our posts in before lunch. We are super happy. Well, at least I am. And uh, they came out really well. Some soils are super soft, sandy, and you get nervous. Others are so rocky and the posts go glancing off. I don't know if I can get a good shot of this, but you can see, you can see all the way through, though I can't line it up perfectly, but you can definitely, all the holes line up. And when the holes line up, we're in business. Everything's nice. It's easy. The better you get the post heights and lined up this way, the nicer the array looks. You don't have to keep adjusting and monkeying with it. So pretty excited. I got an awesome solar window here and uh, not a far trench to run. So got to call the county and say, come inspect. They're always inspect. They don't know what, they just look at the post. They don't know what they're looking at, but anyway, we got to get a trench short trench from here over to that stall right about there and come through here I don't know 60 feet no biggie hopefully the only thing that could really ruin my day is there's a geothermal loop in the ground pretty sure the customer says it's over here I sure hope so we're going right anyway we're gonna find out what's in the ground all right, the end of day one. The post drove really nice on this one. It's getting late, so we got to get out of here. You see the sun's going away. And I got my trench done. Pipes in to a pull box here. I'm going to go up the MT into that LB. I think we got enough pipe. And then we're going to go through the building over to the inverter. So good first day. Q cells going up in the morning. I didn't hit anything. That's the time saver. Man, it's the first time in a long time that I haven't hit septic, haven't hit water, cable, you name it. We didn't hit anything. It's a miracle. And then in here, we've got, uh, this is where our solder's gonna come in to the wiring trough. Nice little Q 
kicks in 90s, and uh, we got our bypass in here for the grid. This is 12K. I'm gonna set our batteries over here so we don't have any workspace violations. Pick up some wire. We're gonna put, this is a QO panel. We're gonna put another QO panel. We're gonna cut it in right below here for critical loads. Got a 100 amp disconnect to go on the outside. This is a pretty straightforward little job. It's a nice little job. Mount this disconnect tomorrow. We got a 24 space little critical loads panel QO. Those QO breakers are expensive. So I had fun just designing this system up and getting all my, it's like Christmas shopping going to, with supply chain issues, I went to three Lowe's, two Home Depots, local electrical supply house. Well, of course, around Thanksgiving, nothing was open. Anyway, I think we did good. We got our supplies and that makes the job go so well when everything is ready to go on site. We boogied. We'll be done with this job in two days, which is nice. 12K battery backup done in two days is not too shabby. All right, day two, got here and started racking some glass. Got 28 Hanwha Q-Cell 400s to put up, real nice panel. And uh, we'll be finished up here and we'll have four strings of seven. That's how we're gonna wire it and we'll parallel strings. So we'll have four conductors and a ground coming back to where Mr. Willis is working on the pull box and EMT LB to get into the, uh, into the mech room. And so uh, doing good. The weather is awesome. And pretty soon we'll have this built and uh, wired up to the IMO disconnect and we can get batteries in place put some juice on the batteries always like to do that up front so batteries are full 100% before we do any load testing get a plant built on the Wi-Fi app and uh, then we'll start the critical loads panel which will take it'll take quite a bit of time and then we have a 100 amp disconnect amount outside so this is a pretty straightforward cookie cutter system for us these days. Ground mount, one solar arc, three batteries, and it's a hybrid system. We will be grid tying with Duke Power on this one. And so it's just a very, coming to, just refining our, refining the process a little and getting it down to two days. Not that that's the goal, but it's kind of nice if it's well thought out, designed. Everything's located. You don't tear up septic systems and everything else. You can boogie. And so pretty much two days to rough this thing. Well, get it functional in two days. And the inspection the following day, a little testing. And we will be in business. And then we're off to Tennessee. Next job will be in Tennessee. I'm going to come across here. So we're good. So uh, we're gonna we're, we're close enough. We're actually gonna pull number ten. We haven't done a job. The ground mount's been close enough for us to have like a two percent voltage drop. So when we bring our solar in on this one, we're bringing in ten. Be an easy pull. And then we'll grid panel, critical loads, probably a J box LB disconnect there. Still working on figuring out how we want to do that. Get these batteries hooked up and get them juicing. All right. Day two, just about lunchtime. <laughs> Take two, Abraham saying it's all sorts of crazy things. I've had to hit through this button five or six times. All right, we're in the mech room now. We finished up the solar array, getting some cutting. Willis is working on cutting in some boxes here. And, ooh, look at that. Look what he found in the wall. Oh, there's wires in there. <laughs> I missed it. That is amazing. Good job, Willis. How'd you do that? Good thing you didn't give me that Sawzall. Good thing. So uh, we're just finishing up. I'm showing you all the details of what we're doing. And the batteries are charging. It's a very overcast end of the day. So we're not getting much solar. Let's make it about 500 watts. But uh, I'll take you out here and pretty happy this this array came out just perfect a lot of it depends on the soil pounding the posts they were just right on the money and everything again if you get your posts right it's just very easy 
to do the, the rack, racking of the panels. Everything just looks good, lines up nicely. So we're pretty happy with that. And uh, the solar's on, charging the batteries. But tomorrow we got inspection in the afternoon. Hopefully we will have at least one, <laughs> one circuit moved into the critical loads panel before they show up and allow us to pass. And uh, I've already gone through a lot of the details on this, but ah, two days of busting it. Well, a lot of driving to get to this job too. So it's, uh, we didn't get here till 10 this morning. So we're doing pretty good, pretty happy with it. We'll get here early tomorrow, get busting it. Day three for the off-grid barn dominium. We're um, just wrapping this job up. It's a beautiful spot. We've had unbelievable weather. We're just uh, we're doing some load testing. Just ran the well pump. There's a well over there. They have a huge bladder tank. We also gave them a bypass so they could produce hot water. And uh, so uh, let me show you. I don't know these guys. Are... Oh man, I'm gonna get demonetized with this kind of singing. Um, so just wrapping this up. We got lots of messes to clean up, but. System is up and running. Pick a mess. mess. Whatever mess you want. So we're uh, not running much right now. We turned all the loads off. Got it online though. It's a nice looking little system. Another Solar 12K with uh, three batteries. Again, we've been building a lot of the last few systems built to expand. So. We could put four more batteries under here, another solar converter there, which is probably what's gonna happen based on a discussion with the homeowner, uh, partly because they'd really like to run their water furnace geothermal heat pump, and I can't do it with a single inverter. And uh, right now it's critical. It's critical loads building time. Thank goodness for Wagos. And then uh, we did put a, another hot water bypass, off-grid H2O in the normal operation. We're in off-grid. Thought you went back on normal. Oh, I, sorry. You got, we got it backwards? I, I wired it backwards, so I gotta switch those stickers. Oh, he's get it to me again. Sorry. Um, so, um, yeah, we're just wrapping up. I think it looks really good. I'll do final shots, but we're, buttoning it all up. The inspector should be here in about 30 minutes. We're ready, hopefully we're ready. We don't want to get too cocky with the inspector. And then our solar circuit, everything's working good. So this is an awesome building. It's full living quarters upstairs, horse stalls back here. It's just a really cool spot. We like these farm type jobs, it's great. So yeah. Got any questions or need a system or need some assistance building your own system? We would love to help you. We're uh, working on permit packages for folks, designs for folks, getting you the equipment, whether we ship it to you or you come to my location and pick it up. I've had people from Texas, Florida, Indiana, you name it this year, come and pick up equipment. So happy to load you up on a Saturday or whatever if you can make it that far. It'll save you a bunch on shipping because it seems to be a, a very expensive problem these days, shipping. And then what my biggest fear is the damage that we keep seeing on panels and mishandling of equipment. So make sure it's put on your truck or trailer and you know the condition of it when you receive it. All right, I think uh, that's almost a wrap. I might have couple things to go over before we get out of here today but that's about it oh who's gonna clean up all this mess oh, it's always a good day when you pass your inspection and the inspector was like well, let me see the drawing and uh, did you build it to the drawing and we did so that was good so we've built it for expansion I'm pretty sure they're gonna go with more batteries more inverter and we'll have to do some more electrical. Right now it's a main panel. We moved a lot of loads into the critical loads panel. We've got a junction box to go out to disconnect and we gave them a hot water move. So they can flip this up when the grid's down and make a tank full of hot water pretty quickly in about an hour. 
then can shut that back off and then have a hot shower. So it's not a nice load. As long as you're able to manage your power and want to heat that tank of water, go for it. So we left a few heavies in the grid panel, moved everything else over. Critical loads, well pumps and washing machines and lights and refrigeration. And, and we left a few spaces for some extra things that are coming. So if we have to redo this, we'll just run both of these panels with uh, and kind of rebuild this with a 200 amp service, run some bigger pipes, bigger wires. And but we'll see. I told uh, the customer just run it and see if they how they do in grid down situations and see how it performs. We got it on PowerView Pro, got a plant built, everything's working good. And our batteries, you'll see these lights when they're charging, they'll flash. So it's running a little bit of juice. It's just running a small load on the critical loads panel. Everything's good, system normal, settings are in. And uh, another fun system to build. These are fun to build. Fun to watch them work too. All right, if we can help you, let me know. This is Engineer 775, going home.